Welcome to Entrepreneur Life with me, Joel Campbell, and I'm an entrepreneur. Blah, 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 blah. Today is going to suck. Suck, 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 suck. I don't know why I just am not feeling it at all today. It is Monday morning, it is quarter to nine, I'm late into my office today. I'm just not in a good space at all. Um, that's it, really. There's no specific reason. I mean, I guess there are reasons as to why I'm not in a good space. But I couldn't, like, go, well, it's because of this or because of this. Because I don't really have anything to whinge or moan or groan or gripe about. So I'm not going to. I just just feel a bit shit today. A bit down. A bit kind of like, can't be fucking asked, Can't be bothered. It's just... It just just deflated on it all, really. And and nothing specifically has made me feel like that. It's just the way I feel this morning. So that's going to make my day harder. I'm going to have to now try and pick myself up, try to sort myself out, try and get through my day. Um, and I think it's important that, you know, it's not always rosy. It's not always, uh, you know, happy easy going fun times sometimes it's really hard and then sometimes just like everybody else I get those days I'm just like fuck it I can't be asked it's hard like that because I can't pull sickies in that way because I've got more responsibility in the sense of if I we've got some people that might pull sickies for example they could pull a sickie and the business will just crack on and that's fine if I pull the sickie it'll be fine but I've got the responsibility to all of our people, to all of our employees, all of our suppliers, all of our trades, all of our customers. So for me, I can't just do that. It's not my way anyway, but I can't just do that. So I've got to plow on. I've got to continue. I've got to press forwards. Or I've got to find somebody else to press forwards for me, which, you know, it's not really me either. So it's just, it's just, it's just going to be a tough day. And I thought I would share that at the very, very beginning of an episode because, well, fuck it, why not? Um, and yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to crack on my day. I'll see how it pans out. I'm not expecting anything particularly today either way. I'm going to go make some tea. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to chew through a few emails. Um, I've got a little legal dispute going on, so I'm going to have to pick up on that one a little bit. Um, and I think I'm going to leave early and go home early. My car's charging. Um, Optimus will be done by half 12. So I think I might leave probably mid-afternoon um, and just go work the rest of the day from home. Just pot around home, really. So that's it. 48 hours later. Good morning, it's currently, what day is it? It's Wednesday, so I did a video Monday and I haven't done a video since, um, but carrying very much on from the episode. So it's Wednesday morning, half nine. Um, as expected, as I sort of said, Monday wasn't the best day. Um, that's so cool it does this, check this out. I do like this, it's like uh, my little tripod. Check this, it's got a little button on the top. You just press the button. It, 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 I just think it's quite cool. Um, so yeah, so as, as expected, Monday wasn't a fantastic day. It was all right. I got stuff done, you know, as, as I needed to. Um, I wouldn't say yesterday was, you know, miles better. Oh shit, my tripod's going to stand up. Um, but you know, again, got it, got the day through, got it done. No major panics. Um, but yeah, just not having the, you know, the, the happy-go-lucky kind of Joel style of weeks that I like to have where everything's like, yeah, come on, let's just do it. I don't know, really know why. I guess there's no specific pressures. There's some good things, some bad things, some ups, some downs, some positives, some negatives. Lots going on as there always is, and as there is in every business. Um, I'm just not feeling it this week particularly. However, what I am going to do is I've just had a um, uh, I've just had an IM come through, which is an information me memorandum which basically is a breakdown of a company. Um, traditionally, when they're for sale, um, whether that's through administration or just through a natural sale. So I've had one land with me this morning that I, I haven't looked at at all. Um, I don't even know the company. I can just see the company name in front of me because they always come with project names. So it might be like Project Hercules or Project Optimus or Project um, Christmas or Project Shazam or whatever it might be. They always give it a project name which keeps it keeps the anonymity 
of the company until you've done the NDAs or non-disclosure agreements, then you generally will get a, an IM, so an information memorandum, and that contains the overview of a company, depending on the size of the company, depends on how big it is, normally somewhere between 18 to 30 pages. There is generally quite a good chunk of detail on there. It's normally prepared by an accountant or an insolvency practitioner or an administration practitioner or something along those lines. And like I say, it gives you an overview so you can ascertain the position of the company, the EBITDAs, the assets, so on and so forth, and basically make a decision as to whether it's valued correctly or not, um, and whether you want to proceed with a purchase or not. It's that starting point. Think Dragon's Den. This is the pitch without the pitch. Um, and this is where the due diligence would get done behind the scenes effectively. Um, so yeah, so I've received one. I'm going to have a look at it now. I can't disclose anything about it because of the NDAs, but I thought it might be interesting just to film as I do it to see kind of how I respond to it. I, I don't know. I just thought I'm going to look through it now for, for 15, 20 minutes, um, do a very, very first part of due diligence, um, and then basically just... I thought I'd just film it and see see sort of what it looks like. So um, I'm going to crack on and do that and we'll see where we get to. So page one, <laughs> project name. I can see the company name now. So I'll be able to have a look at them later on in Google. Have a look at their website, see what they do. So this one's broken down um, via a business overview, by products and services, by the, the, the journey for customers, by servicing, accreditations, structure, financials, customers, suppliers, people and organizations, premises, and then contact information. Fairly standard IM process. And like I said, I'm just gonna have a quick flick through. There's a huge amount of content around the important notices, which is all around the IM, all the um, legal stuff, all the limitations, all the uh, NDA bits and pieces. We should not, you know, not always see those kind of things. I'm just reading it very quickly. It's solicitor jargon, basically. Um, okay, right. It's a good turnover. It's a lot bigger than we are. <laughs> a lot bigger than we are. Fucking hell. That's a jump. Um, it's got a decent GP, which is a gross profit. Oh, I'm loving this already. This is exactly why I don't want to look at this company, because it's not really in our in our field. It's not really in our skill set. Well, I say it's not in our skill set. The actual day-to-day -day operations of this business are probably not necessarily directly in our skill set, but they don't need to be because we can hire people to do that. The growth of the business is definitely in our skill set. So I'm just having a quick look at that. And I think it's, um, wow, that's impressive. A good split of revenue in terms of, they're not a, I looked at a company the other day, which I'm still, I'm still looking at. So it's, it's a service business and the, the about 60 percent of their income was made up of five customers and they had like nearly a hundred so it meant like 90 odd customers then made up 40 percent and it was a really weirdly balanced business but it's always slightly worrying when one customer has a huge percentage like i don't know 25 percent upwards it's kind of a bit worrying because you lose that you lose you lose your you know big big journey i think that this is quite difficult to do whilst recording so i think i'm going to turn this off here because i need to i do need to focus a little bit more but i'm certainly going to be doing this in the future when kieran starts um and sharing this journey with you but this one's i knew this would happen i like the look of this company already and i'm only on page eight and i just don't know how we'd be able to afford it um but i think it's one that we should we should we should acquire so anyway, <laughs> that's Joel. That's a, that's an insight to Joel. Just like I don't do shit small. I don't think small. I think scale. I think big. And I think where this can partially fit into our ecosystem as it currently exists, but really more than that, where it can go further for getting our ecosystem and how it stands to so two feet and how it goes. Anyway, ladies. Same size. How did you get? It is big. 
He was, he was wearing shoes. <laughs> It's a nice bike. You see what it's called? Huh? See what it's called? What is it? There. Uh, what was it called? Ven. It's a Avenger. Or nearly. Vengeance. Vengeance. <laughs> I don't, don't know why it's called Vengeance, it just is. Much, much, much later. I'm good, I'm off to do, actually I'm filming, but I'm off to just finish the data cabling bits for your production. I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. So as I was saying, um, I'm off to go and do, we've got a production coming in in a few weeks and they just need to look at something internet wise. So somehow I got um, labelled with doing that task. I think it's because actually I'm the one that knows where the cables are still, although that is being handed over. You keep, oh, fair enough. <laughs> Prisons, everyone gets going away. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm just heading out onto site to do that very quickly, and it's raining, and it's horrible, and the drain pipes are still leaking, despite spending six grand to get the bloody things fixed, they're still leaking. So unfortunately, that is what happens. Sorry, mate. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's really kind of just something I've been asked to do very quickly, so I'm just going to nip off and do that. And I just I thought I would just share, because as I was doing that, I was having an email conversation with Lauren, and it was probably the most inappropriate um, conversation to be having over email um, with one of your team, um, because there was lots of banter going backwards and forwards, banter behind bars, um, lots of rude stuff going backwards and forwards, and there might even have been some personal jibes where Lauren was taking the mick out of my ears. Um, but it's okay because it meant we could throw some mum jokes in there. Um, so like I say, probably not the most professional way of doing a meeting. I'm gonna have to go because I've got to get into this cabinet and somewhere on this bunch of keys is the correct key. Um, I need to do this because I'm on a bit of a deadline, so I'll do some more in a little while. Just heading back up to my office after grabbing lunch and I thought I would actually stop and just explain this in a little bit more detail. So I'll show you in a second the leaks. Well, I'll show you now the leaks that we've got in the drain pipes, which we have paid to have fixed twice. So check these out. So I can see here, you can see like, there's a leak coming down there, something through the drain pipe. It's not raining anymore. And I look up, I don't know if you can be able to see it. There it is, see the crack on the joint? See that one there? And then there's another one there on the other join. Uh, I think there's probably one further down. Yeah, there's one there. So there's three decent, four. Oh no, that's an overflow pipe, that's fine. Four decent cracks. And we have spent probably, I think it's about six grand fixing these in the, in the past couple of visits, like just this section alone, because in this section, we can't get the cherry picker in because of the buildings. So we have to basically, they get the cherry picker so far over this section, and then the rest of it then has to be done off scaffold, it has to be done off the build. So obviously it inflates the cost. So we've had the drains done a couple of times, um, as a couple of other drains as well around the building, proper, proper companies, and basically they're just, still leaking on the seals where they just haven't fixed them properly and i guess this brings me on to why people think i'm a dick so i always say i'm a dick and i kind of talk about it a little bit flipp flippantly i'm prickly absolutely that's just my natural personality is prickly um, but at the same time, I can be really easy, really straightforward, um, incredibly easy going. I think quite good to work for. Um, so yeah, it, it depends on, I say it depends, it doesn't depend. It's based on a level of performance. So for example, I'm sure if you spoke to the guys who do our drains for us, they would say, Rolls a dick. The reason they would say that is because the level of work that they've done is substandard. It is not up to the standard that we expect. It's not up to, it says fall upstairs. It's not up to the standard that we've paid for. And it's not up to the standard that is a good job because it's not a good job. So we obviously try to get them to come back and do it and get them to fix it and such along those lines. And then we get into this, well, we can come back and do it, but it's gonna cost this much and so on and so forth. <sighs> Breath now. Um, 
So, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And then there's this world of, well, but you haven't done it properly in the first place. Why would we pay you to come back and do it again when you haven't done it properly once? And then we get into this realm of how far do you push it? Because it's not really worth taking legal action because it's not, it is a good chunk of money, but by the time we take into consideration the cost and the time of the legal side of things, assuming that we win, then what are we really gonna gain from that? We'll get our money back, but we'll probably spend that again just in the time, the effort to do it. And sometimes life's just a bit too short. And it's just, so what happens then is we have to make a decision based on the value of whether it's worth it. And if it's not, then we just have to accept that's a loss. And therefore, I'm now going, you guys that came to do this work, that guaranteed you would do X, Y, and Z, and we paid you to do X, Y, and Z, and that's the agreement, who haven't done it, you're shit. And I think you're poor in the service you provide, and I'm really fucked off with you. And I think you're being dicks for not fixing it. Um, and then what happens is it makes it look as if I'm the bad guy or I being the dick because I'm calling them out and not doing a good job or not doing the job that we paid them for. And that's predominantly how I work across the board. And I guess that's difficult both for employees to a degree, and I'll come back to them, but also for suppliers because with suppliers, I am really quite um, particular and detailed on the level of what we get from people. So therefore, if there was an agreement in place that said we're gonna deliver this, and that's, that's the deliverables, and they don't, then I want to know why not. And sometimes what I find is when I ask that question, I get this, well, why, why, why are you asking that? I'm like, well, because that's what we agreed, you haven't delivered it. Um, and it's, it's really interesting how quickly I become the bad guy when somebody doesn't deliver what they're paid to deliver. It's different with our employees. There's still a level of performance that people need to achieve. There's still a level of expectation. And uh, obviously, you know, the, the performance indicators in, within their job. But we, with our people, we have a responsibility to their development and their progression and their learning. With an external company and external contractors, whilst we will support that, that's not our responsibility because that's their business, therefore it's their responsibility. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. It's just one of probably a hundred things um, that pop up with yeah, managing old buildings, listed buildings, any kind of building effectively. And obviously, you know, with, with prisons comes an additional or comes a level of complexity. Um, and like I say, we go to get things fixed. And when it costs us X amount and people don't do the job properly, we have to figure out what we're going to do. And it's just a bit shit that people don't do the job properly. And I just get really pissed off that people are okay doing a substandard job that they know has not been done right because we can show them. Um, and they seem okay with that. And that really annoys me because that's not how we work. That's not how our businesses work. It's not how our companies work. It's not how our ethos works. You won't find that in Cove Group anywhere. None of our businesses or our investments would accept that quality or lack of quality to any of our customers or clients. Um, and that's something I'm really proud of and something I hold, I hold very, very dear is a huge part of our ethos and a huge part of our culture. And the way we get there is by ensuring our people care and by ensuring our people care is by ensuring we care about them. I'm going to do more about that as we go forward. But anyway, I just thought I'd, I just thought I'd share that with you because I was wandering around and I thought that was a, a good little glimpse of the inside life of entrepreneur. I'm going to have some lunch. Okay, I'm just outside. It's getting later in the afternoon. It's actually come really sunny because it was pouring down with rain earlier. It's become quite a nice day. So I'm just outside working on my tan. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's going to sound ridiculous. I'm going to have to shut off at any second because... I'm just waiting for a guy to come up who is a mobile valet um, because I'm just going to get one of the cars cleaned because it's an absolute state and because we don't own them, we lease them, I was like, oh, we need to keep these in good condition. So um, to save time, uh, effectively, I'm having a mobile guy come out to do it and we're just going to test it on one of the cars and see what it's like and see if it's any good. And there's Lauren with the bins and the recycling. No, just the bin. There's the recycling. 
You ain't getting the recycling there, right? Where are you taking the bin? Bins are that way. All oh, right. It's a bit odd. Um, she was just messaging me going, hey, I'm gonna get the bins, you're gonna get the recycling. I went, nah, you can do it. Um, she called me lazy. It's like, all the things you can call me, lazy is not one of them. She said, why, what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting for a guy to come clean my car. <laughs> so, um, I guess that is a little lazy. But yeah, so I just thought we'd get that done to test it, see whether that makes sense, see whether it saves us time, to see if that's a better thing. Um, Graham's just arrived as well. Go, mate. You just arrived, fucking journal. <laughs> How's your tour? Good, good, good. good. Yeah. 19, is my plan. That's good, yeah, it's good, good for today. Everyone say hello to Graham. Uh, Working on your tan, mate? Sorry? Working on your tan? <laughs> <laughs> Although I did get he's, out the other day. He's, he's couple, just had a he's just had a decking in a real Here we go, here real go. sun trap on my decking. Yeah. And I catch it right from the morning, right to the late afternoon, about six o'clock at night. So sometimes I just sit there up against the wall, you know, and he just and I just put the head fucking back. Just close my eyes, pick up that sun because it's quite Yeah, a I know what you mean, yeah. Have a whiskey in one hand. Well sometimes yeah, I don't, absolutely. It's very often. Well, I'll come back to you in a sec. I've just finished work. Oh, how's my light? Is my light alright? Let's see if I can get brighter. Uh, It would really help if I knew what I was doing in this car. I'd have thought by now, I'm pressing a button. Oh, I was doing that. Oh, what's it doing? Uh, hold on. Uh, deactivate all reading lights. Lights open when door, ambient lighting, ambient lighting. Background light, let's turn that up. Accent lighting, let's turn that up. Reduce lighting for night. Lighting events, lighting events, what the hell? Feedback via steering wheel, what? Vibration intensity, medium, lighting elements, steering wheel impulse. What the hell is a steering wheel impulse? Automatically adjust speed to root. Corner speed slow, <laughs> fast. Actively follow the route, steering wheel impulse. Stop at traffic lights, manual, drive off reminder. Jesus Christ, I didn't even know I did have this stuff. So, uh, my car is more intelligent than I am. I think we've established that. Uh, finished work, come to pick up Delaney. I uh, actually d I did uh, a load of admin till about half seven this evening. Then I didn't take a break tonight like I normally did, like I normally do. I had a quick bite to eat, but only like five minutes. Then I, uh, Emma and Jenna actually arrived and then we went and started building all the shelves to go in the archive store. And I'm gonna finish that tomorrow morning because we've got, um, it's really actually quite exciting because we've got, we've got a whole room filled with boxes and files and stuff like that that need to go properly into a store. So I'll be doing that and getting all those sorted because at the moment they're just piled up in a server room. They all need moving so that they're properly, all the financial files, all the documents, just so much stuff and it just needs sorting. So we're doing that at the moment. Um, and part of the reason we're doing that was helping to drive that is that, let's see if I can put that on. What's helping to drive that is I had a conversation with the solicitors the other day and they've just, where we've purchased the rest of the building, we've been given all of the deeds of the prison. So they've got four large archive boxes of deeds. And I chatted with the other owners the other day and they've got two boxes of, of stuff. So I need to go pick up, I'm gonna pick up all six boxes next week. But some of those things date back to 1500, which I can't quite understand. It's a bit puzzling for me because the prison was built in 1793. So I'm, I'm not sure why there's documents dating back to 1500 or what those documents might even be. So that's quite exciting. The team that love the history side of things are super excited by that. I'm quite excited by that because none of us have got any idea of what these things are going to be. So that's why I'm sorting the archive store because we need a nice, safe, secure, warm place for all of this to go. So it's all looked after. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just get it sorted. So I'm going to do that today and tomorrow, or I was doing that this evening. I'm going to finish it hopefully tomorrow. Um, and I can have the rest of the weekend then to myself, although I've got to prepare a presentation on Sunday for Thursday, because on Thursday I'm going to Oxford Brooks University to speak to the tourism students who are all about dark tourism, so I've got to prep for that. Um, and a busy, busy week next week of driving around all over the place. So um, anyway, that's me done for this evening. I think that might even be the end of the show. Fuck it, should we call it the end of the show? I'm just trying to think whether there's any point in me filming anything tomorrow in the archive bits, but I don't think there is. I don't think it'll be that exciting putting together shelves. So let's call that a night. 
This has been Entrepreneur Life with me, Joel Campbell, and I am an entrepreneur.